Growing up, I had a happy, normal childhood. Shortly after turning eight, all of that changed. I didn't know what sexual abuse was, and I felt very dirty, and I hated my body. When we're children, we don't get a choice in what our subconscious minds decide that we're going to believe and take into our future. We're taking anything that's fed to us as truth, and what that does to us is that says, this environment is bigger than me, and so obviously they must be right, and I must be wrong. And that belief goes deep, and it goes to the core. Remember the first day I went into the special ed class, the teacher called me up in front of the room, and she goes, I don't know if you know this or not, but only stupid and retarded kids go to special ed. When a young person is rejected, that physiological state creates a context for the shaping of the brain, such that certain meanings also get attached where those meanings can be incredibly negative, negative about oneself, negative about the world. The meaning is, I don't matter. I started to give up hope. So in order to cope with that pain, I started doing drugs. I decided that day that I was gonna end my life. So I went into the bathroom to hang myself. I could feel myself dying and all I could see is darkness. I got arrested and it was apparent that I wasn't going to get out this time. And I hit that cell and I heard that door close. It's like a sound you've never heard before. Almost all of our behaviors, all of our beliefs, our loves are all grounded in perception. Perception touches everything. It touches art, it touches beauty, it touches music. Everything begins with perception. You will never fix what you're not willing to face. You'll never win your war by running from your battle, right? The hurt might not be your fault, but the healing is your responsibility. When you open your eyes and look around, of course you see a world because that world exists. The question is, are you seeing it accurately? And I think all of us have an underlying assumption that our perception of the world is the world. Well, I'd like to challenge that. What if I am somehow the cause of all these experiences? If I was not the creator of my experiences, it meant the world really was a shitty place. But if I did in fact create those experiences, what did that mean to me? It meant I could create something different in its place. If you can choose your life, why aren't you choosing something different? Why am I not choosing something greater for myself? Everyone else out there is choosing how they want to live. How come I'm not? I cannot choose whether I'm victimized, but I have the ability to say I will never be a victim because there's always something you can do differently. And once you understand that you can always make a different choice and get a different reaction, and that's the power in your life, that's the power that you have, is no matter what's going on, you can choose to think differently, believe differently, see differently. All of those things are a choice because you can always change how you think about something. For me, finding my voice was taking responsibility for everything that had ever happened to me. And when I say that before anyone gasps, it wasn't my responsibility to take on how my abusers felt or what they did to me. It's what I felt about myself because of the abuse. It was the inner self-talk that ruined me. The mistake that I see a lot of people make is they expect the situation that hurt them to heal them. One of the worst ways to live your life is allowing a situation that's no longer a part of your life to control the rest of your life. The erosion of the self, that's the danger. I see people every day that tell themselves a story about themselves that they are worthless, that they're meaningless, that they're pointless, that their friends and family would be better off if they just died. Believing I'm worthless does not serve me and I don't do things that don't serve me. I 
I want people to wake up and look at their life. One thing that my husband always said to me was, what if you're everything that you think that you're not and nothing that you think that you are? That opened my eyes up. What if I am everything that I tell myself I'm not? I am great. Why did I spend so much time telling myself I wasn't? You are capable of more than you can ever possibly imagine. There is only one version of failure, and that is failing to get back up. Don't get to the end of your life and look back and go, why did I waste it? Why didn't I try harder? Why didn't I do the things necessary to grow? Why was I so scared? So what do you want to say at the end of your life? Do you want to say I played small, I gave into fears? Or do you want to say I lived and I loved and I owned my greatness? Fear is a lie. Change your interpretation and become the most powerful version of you. This is your journey. It's not about perfection, but progression. It's not about being perfect, it's about becoming better. It's about your mentality. What's the point of dreaming a dream? You're not working to turn that dream into reality. For your dreams, for your family, for your passion, for anything. Don't you ever stop working. And always remember this, when a destination is worth reaching, the path won't always be perfect. It all starts with you. Let's get it.